For generations, we have been told a story about ourselves, that the vivid richness of our thoughts, the boundless realm of our dreams, and the very essence of our awareness all spring from the intricate electrical dance within our brains. It's a compelling narrative, deeply rooted in our scientific understanding, suggesting that consciousness is merely an emergent property, a grand illusion conjured by gray matter and neurons. But what if this widely accepted truth is, in fact, only a fraction of the actual story? What if the brain is not a creator of consciousness, but something far more profound and mysterious? A sophisticated filter, carefully selecting and limiting the vast ocean of reality, allowing only a tiny proportion to reach our awareness. Imagine for a moment that your perception of the world, your sense of self, and even the laws of physics you inhabit are not the full picture but rather a heavily edited version, meticulously curated by the very organ you believe generates your mind. This isn't a flight of fancy from ancient mystics or a speculative thought experiment. It's a theory gaining unexpected traction from the frontiers of neuroscience, a theory quietly challenging the bedrock of our understanding. In this journey, we will explore the audacious idea that your brain hides more than it reveals we will examine documented cases of extraordinary brain anomalies that defy explanation, uncover the profound insights offered by near-death experiences, and investigate what modern psychedelic research, particularly with compounds like DMT, suggests about the brain's true role. Prepare to question everything you thought you knew about your mind, death, and the very nature of reality itself. What if your brain is indeed holding back a cosmic truth, waiting to be remembered? What you're about to see could fundamentally alter how you view your own existence. If you turn away now, you'll miss the evidence that challenges everything you've been taught about consciousness. If you like exploring these types of questions, please consider subscribing. The conventional understanding posits that consciousness is an intricate product of the brain generated by its complex neural machinery. But an alternative view, one with roots stretching back over a century, suggests a fundamentally different role, the brain as a sophisticated filter. This radical idea was championed by pioneering thinkers like Aldous Huxley and William James, who dared to imagine that our everyday awareness is merely a limited version of a much grander reality. Aldous Huxley, through his profound experiences with mescaline, famously coined the term reducing valve to describe the brain's function. He proposed that the brain, far from producing consciousness, acts as a necessary mechanism for survival, filtering out the overwhelming deluge of universal consciousness. Without this valve, he argued, we would be inundated by the full spectrum of reality, unable to process or function in the physical world. It's like a radio receiver that tunes into a specific frequency, allowing us to hear one song clearly but not creating the music itself. The music, in this analogy, is always present, broadcast on countless frequencies. William James, a century prior, articulated a similar concept, the transmission theory of consciousness. He suggested that the brain might not be a generator, but rather a kind of antenna or conduit through which consciousness is transmitted. Our individual minds, then, are not self-contained entities but specialized expressions of a larger, fundamental consciousness that exists independently. This contrasts sharply with mainstream materialism, which holds that consciousness originates and is entirely contained within the physical brain. If the brain is the sole source of awareness, then any impairment or cessation of brain activity should logically extinguish consciousness. Yet, this materialist perspective struggles to account for phenomena that suggest an expansion of awareness even when the brain is compromised? Why do profound psychedelic experiences, which alter brain chemistry, often report a dissolution of the self and a sense of unity with everything, as if a veil has lifted? Why do accounts from near-death experiences, when the brain is clinically inactive, often describe heightened clarity and perception outside the body? These observations pose a critical question if the brain creates consciousness, why does its impairment or cessation sometimes correlate with an expansion of awareness rather than its diminishment? If the brain is merely a filter, then there must be moments when that filter falters, 
allowing glimpses of a reality far grander than our everyday perception. And indeed, the edges of human experience offer compelling, even unsettling evidence that challenges our most fundamental assumptions. Consider the phenomenon of near-death experiences, or NDEs, and the startling reports that emerge from the brink of clinical death. One of the most significant investigations into NDEs comes from Dr. Pim Van Lommel's study published in The Lancet. This groundbreaking research followed hundreds of cardiac arrest patients, many of whom reported profound experiences of heightened awareness, clarity, and perceptions that occurred during periods when their brains showed no measurable electrical activity. Some described observing the medical procedures being performed on their own bodies from an out-of-body perspective, later recounting precise details of instruments used, conversations among staff, or even objects hidden from their normal line of sight, details that were later verified. These are not vague impressions, but remarkably coherent and accurate accounts from a state where, by conventional understanding, consciousness should be absent. How can a brain without activity perceive, process, and retain such complex information? Then there are the cases of individuals with extraordinary brain anomalies who live lives of normal, even enhanced, cognition. Imagine a person with severe hydrocephalus, often referred to as water on the brain, where the skull is largely filled with cerebrospinal fluid, leaving only a thin outer layer of brain tissue. The Lancet itself reported a man in France who, despite having an estimated 75% of his brain volume taken up by fluid, was a married civil servant with children and possessed an average IQ. By all accounts, his brain should not have been capable of supporting normal consciousness, let alone a complex professional and family life. Yet, he functioned as any other person would. And even more moving are the instances of terminal lucidity, where individuals suffering from severe neurodegenerative diseases like advanced Alzheimer's or dementia who have been nonverbal and unresponsive for years, suddenly regain full mental clarity and awareness in the hours or days before their death. They recognize loved ones, speak coherently, and recall distant memories, only for their symptoms to return or for them to pass away shortly after. These are not isolated incidents. They are documented observations that defy neurological explanation. If consciousness is merely a product of the brain, how can it operate with such profound clarity when the very organ meant to generate it is almost entirely eroded or clinically silent? These cases demand we ask, if consciousness isn't contained within the brain, where exactly is it? If the brain is a filter, what happens when we temporarily disable it? This is where modern psychedelic research, particularly with NN dimethyltryptamine or DMT, offers a profound glimpse into what might lie beyond our ordinary perception. Often called the spirit molecule, DMT is a powerful psychedelic compound found in nature and endogenously in the human body. Its effects are intense, rapid, and often described as entering an entirely different dimension of reality. Groundbreaking fMRI research by scientists like Dr. Robin Carhart Harris and his team at Imperial College London has provided critical insights into what happens in the brain during these experiences. Their studies have shown that during a DMT journey, there's a significant suppression of activity within the default mode network, or DMN. The DMN is a set of interconnected brain regions that are most active when we're engaged in self-referential thought, mind-wandering, or forming our sense of a separate, individualized self. It's often considered the brain's ego network, when the DMN activity drops, people consistently report a profound dissolution of their ego. The feeling of I vanishes, replaced by a sense of boundless unity or connection to something vast and universal. Crucially, the experiences reported under DMT bear striking resemblances to the verifiable aspects of near-death experiences and deep mystical states described across cultures for millennia. Individuals often speak of encountering intelligent entities moving through hyperdimensional spaces, or experiencing ultimate truth and interconnectedness. It's a complete shift in subjective reality, occurring as the very part of the brain responsible for our everyday self-awareness is quieted. So, are these just elaborate hallucinations, 
bizarre neurological misfirings in a chemically altered brain? Or could they be something more? A temporary lifting of the brain's filter, allowing access to aspects of consciousness that are usually screened out? The materialist explanation often defaults to hallucination, but the profound clarity, consistency of reports across individuals, and the transformative impact these experiences have on people's lives often challenge such simplistic categorization. If the brain is indeed a filter, then DMT, by dampening its off switch in the DMN, might not be creating illusions, but rather revealing a deeper, more fundamental layer of reality that our ordinary waking consciousness is designed to limit. If the brain filters reality, what truly lies on the other side? We began by questioning the most fundamental assumption about our minds, that the brain creates consciousness. Through documented anomalies of individuals living with minimal brain tissue, the verifiable perceptions reported during near-death experiences, and the profound insights offered by DMT research on the default mode network, a different picture begins to emerge. These aren't isolated curiosities. They are converging lines of evidence that lend remarkable weight to the filter theory. The idea that our brains act not as generators of awareness, but as receivers, or more accurately, as sophisticated reducing valves. This perspective invites us to consider that the rich and vibrant reality we experience every day is a carefully curated frequency, a limited bandwidth designed for our survival and interaction within this physical dimension. It suggests that consciousness itself might be far vaster, more fundamental, and perhaps even intrinsic to the very fabric of the universe, with our individual brains merely tuning into a specific channel. What if consciousness isn't something we have, but something we are? An inherent aspect of existence that the brain filters down into manageable individual experiences? This profound question challenges not only our understanding of life, but also recontextualizes our perception of death. It opens the door to a reality where our awareness transcends the physical form, where connection to a larger consciousness is our natural state, veiled only by the brain's necessary limitations. The journey into this profound possibility has only just begun. If this journey into the mysteries of consciousness resonated with you, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to Beyond Reality. Your support helps us continue to explore the profound questions that lie at the edge of our understanding.